in the kitchen with Bo McMillan at the Sanctuary Resort. We've got an incredible dish for you today. We have sesame crusted albacore tuna. Absolutely fresh, absolutely delicious on crab fried rice. Well, no further ado, let's introduce you to the man. Chef. Good to see you, brother. Wonderful to see you. Thanks for being here. Talk about this beautiful product. This is like pure butter. It's actually a sushi grade albacore. But what I like about it too is sustainable. It's good for the environment. We want to use this really? fish right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you sear this fish, and you know, like I know, you can go to a sushi restaurant, you can go sashimi style, you can, you can do it raw. We are going to cook it, but we're going to cook it gently, just so it kind of brings out that beautiful buttery texture. This this will eat like a steak, and that's what I want to. That's what okay. I want to achieve with this. So okay. You're going for kind of a two tone look. It's still going to have a Absolutely. little chill in the middle. Absolutely so beautiful. Okay. okay. We're going to just drizzle a little oil over the top. Okay. And one of my tricks for this uh, searing method is I like to have a hot pan, but I don't want to be extremely hot. I don't want it to be burning in there. Okay. And we said crusted. We were talking about sesame crusted. A lot of chefs will actually rub the oil on the fish, rub the sesame seeds right on the fish, and go ahead and crust it that way. But what that happens to me is sometimes if their pan is too hot or their heat's too high, okay. you'll burn those sesame seeds, right? Okay. Gives a bitter taste to it. So I like to toast my sesame seeds first, okay. and I'm gonna show you through this technique what we'll do at the end to get that crust on there, okay? There's a little trick. So a generous portion of pepper. Pepper and tuna, I mean peas and carrots, right? We got some salt, we're gonna add a little bit of salt. This fish is very delicate, so if we are using a good amount of heat, we don't have to go too long, right? Because we want this fish to be rare. So I'm gonna get my pan on, drizzle a little olive oil in there. Just enough so it kind of coats the bottom of that pan. Let those pores open up, and then JP, this is what we want to do. Same thing. We'll throw that right in there, and hopefully get it so it doesn't stick. And then just let this cook right up, okay? That's going to give that a nice little brown crust right on there. Okay, tip. Okay, now the law of displacement means that when you put something, especially high protein in the pan, it pushes all the oil out of the way and that protein goes to the bottom of the pan and sticks. What you want to do is lift that protein back up so the oil can go back underneath because it's displacing the oil. Allow the oil to go underneath, create that lubricant layer, and then you won't stick. Okay, this is at the point now where it's pretty much, you can almost see how that fish is cooking. It's almost like halfway up the side. So gently, we'll take the tongs, and we'll flip that fish. Same thing, getting that lubricant in there, just like you explained. Same thing on the other side. Okay? And what I like to do now is just basically let this rest in the pan, okay? So you've cooked this maybe 20 seconds on one side, flipped it over and pulled it off. That's it. We should have that cool pink center with that warm crust, okay? And I love that when we go to a restaurant, we're gonna let that rest. When we get done our other mise en place, We'll pop those right back in the oven, right okay. before we're to the coven, so the guests can experience the warm outer side with the cool inside, Jerry. Okay? And then JP, this is what I like to do with this. I've got a spoon right here, and I've got a little touch of basil pesto, okay? If you take this basil pesto. Are you kidding me? And just give that a thin little layer of pesto and oil, okay? Now pesto and tuna, phenomenal combination. Little but you know oil. what, it makes sense with the sesame because you have Thai basil, you have a lot of basil Absolutely. in cooking. Absolutely. That makes sense. Now I have that toasted sesame in there, and you can be, you can be all you can be. If you want to go a heavy crust on sesame, go a heavy crust on sesame. It's your world, we just live in it. You know, that's how it works, okay? So that just has to rest. We'll flash that up right before we're done with the plate. Okay. We're gonna make a beautiful dish. So set this over here. Killer, okay? Fried rice, oh gosh, I love fried rice. I grew up on the East Coast, Chinese food, very prevalent where I'm from in, 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 this, in the south of Boston. And uh, I just have been a fan. When we opened up Elements, we wanted to impart American cuisine with Asian accents. Okay. So I got to play with ingredients, like you know those Asian, Asian ingredients like mirin and soy sauce and, mm -hmm. and things. These ingredients are so powerful. Ginger, they do a right. lot of the work for you, you know? So you just gotta be, you just gotta be you know, watching what you're doing. So we got a pan here. I've cooked this rice in advance, so it dries a little bit. It's okay. fully cooked and it's dried out a little bit, and that's gonna help with the cooking process to kind of fluff it up and soften it. Um, in the pan, I wanna sweat off some vegetables, and just like with fried rice too, it's, it's whatever you want, JP. So I, I put some carrots here. I've got some beautiful snow peas. I got a little bit of a red onion, okay? 
So something I'm noticing is everything is, is cut basically the same size for exactly. even cooking? Exactly. Even cooking and the textures come together. And when you're dealing with the rice, I mean, you don't want to be so large that it damages the integrity. The rice is a star. It's what you're putting in it that makes it happen, okay? I've got some ginger. So I'm going to throw that ginger in. And sweat that off. And now you can get cooking, okay? I've got my onions and my sugar snap peas. And I got my carrots, okay? When you're working in the restaurant, you know that carrots tend to cook a little bit longer, take, take a little bit longer, so you can pre-blanch these if you want to and shock them in a little bit of ice water. Don't go away, Fine Wine and Design will be right back. Up next, Chef Bo McMillan shares his secret to perfectly seared and encrusted albacore. For today's recipe, log on to finewineanddesign.com and click on food and beverage.